Hello out there and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. That's BlenderTEK.com. Don't forget to remember, create your way. Today we'll be giving you an introduction to the fluid simulator in Blender. I think this is one of the coolest features that Blender has added in some of the more recent versions. The fluid simulator does exactly what it sounds like. It simulates fluid in a realistic way with using real-world physics. So essentially you could make any kind of liquid from oil to water all the way to molasses and you could simulate how it pours, how it moves into objects, how it moves out of objects, etc. Don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D and programming videos. The team adds between 3 to 10 a day. So let's get started shall we? The first thing we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna make sure that we're in orthographic mode. That's how I always do my modeling for the most part. Then we're going to move to front view by pressing numpad 1 and we're just going to add a simple cube. So with our cube added, let's scale it up a little bit, about four times bigger. So this cube is what we call the domain box. The domain is basically as it sounds. It's a domain, it's a boundary. It's how far the fluid simulator will calculate water physics. Any water that comes to the edge of this box won't be calculated. It will stop at the edges, the top, it'll st and the bottom of this box. It'll stop no matter where this box is at the edge of it. It won't go past it, it won't go through it, it won't fall through it, and it won't jump above it. It's going to stay within this box. So that is our domain. So to set up our domain, again, this time we're just using a cube, but you can use any shape you want. You simply go over to the physics tab, which is the very last one, which has a bouncy ball, and then you enable fluid physics. So click the fluid button. So right now, our box is selected. It has fluid physics enabled, but the type is none. Since this is our domain box, we're going to choose domain. Now a whole bunch of settings comes up and they should be pretty good at stock but I'm going to show you a few things that you should change. The first thing is start and end time. This says exactly as the tool tips say. When does, the t when does it start in seconds and when does it end in seconds? This is the fluid simulation. So if you're using the stock setup of 250 frames for your animations and you're doing it at 25 frames per second that means you have a 10 second animation so in that case you'd want to turn this up to 10 seconds so that your animations so that the fluid simulation lasts the entire 10 seconds which equals out to your 250 frames a lot of people skip right over this and it ends up that their fluid looks like it's in slow motion if you wanted slow motion simulation that's great turn it down then and you, it will look like it's in slow motion but to have it look like it's at full speed you want to have it equal to the total time of your animation. So if you're working at 30 frames per second and you do a 10 second time here, you would need 300 frames. Another thing to pay attention to is the resolution for final and preview. I usually leave preview where it's at, but final you'll want to crank up for your final render. That basically just is an idea of how realistic your simulation is going to be. A setting of around 175 to 250 makes it very realistic without adding too much time to the baking. You can leave the rest of the settings the same I believe, however make sure this this file path here is set to a temporary folder that can be cleared. This is my standard temp folder, so that can be cleared when I use a drive cleanup in Windows. Or you can just choose a folder maybe named cache or say bake cache somewhere on your drive where you can delete the files after because Blender is going to create hundreds of files to, for all the simulations that it's going to do. So next up, we need to create something for our fluid to interact with. Let's go into wireframe mode so that we can see what we're doing. Let's move our cube up so that it's basically resting on what we would assume is the world's floor basically, the red line. So have it about right there. Now let's add a floor just for looks. 
So we're going to add in a plane. I'm going to do this from top view. So I'm going to add in a mesh plane. I'm going to scale it out just slightly bigger than the cube. Now we have kind of a floor. So now from front view, let's go and let's create a new object. Let's create, say, a UV sphere. Let's grab it and let's put it somewhere in our domain. This is going to be where our fluid comes from. Or this is going to become our fluid. This is going to essentially be our water. This cube is going to be what our water is. So how to change this cube into essentially water. Again in the physics tab we enable fluid. This time though we choose something else. Now I'll tell you what the different things mean but I'm not going to use them in this one. The ones you'll mostly be working with are outflow which basically is like a drain. It makes makes your water or your fluid get removed from the boundary box. Uh, An inflow means the object adds fluid. So for example if this was a circle or a pipe you would use inflow and it would basically generate a stream of water and I'll add a video in at the beginning or the end to show how this works. An obstacle would be something that the fluid is going to interact with. So for example if you had a cup underneath our sphere here and you made it as an obstacle that way the water would drop into the cup and it would basically fill the cup but it wouldn't go out of the cup since it since the cup is an obstacle. Uh, fluid turns it into a fluid exactly as it sounds like and domain we already went over so our sphere is going to be our fluid. So the settings are very simple here uh, you'd use shell if it was something again like a cup and you wanted it just to use basically the outside as if it was a shell or you'd use both if you needed both but this will be for another video another time and the other thing that you can play around with is the initial velocity so in the x y and z directions is how much velocity it will have from the start frame so if you were to give it some x velocity in the plus direction, say 1.8, our fluid would be thrown across and probably hit the side of our boundary box somewhere. But we're going to leave that at zero so that it just simply falls down at the rate of gravity. If you were using something like inflow and you had a tap, you would want a little bit of initial velocity so that it is basically pouring out in a certain direction and not just falling. So now that that's set up, let's give it something a little bit interesting. Let's go into front view again, and in object mode, let's add a new plane. I'm going to rotate this around the X 90 degrees so it's flat. I'm going to scale it up a little bit, but not too big. And then I'm going to move it up, and then I'm going to move it so it's in the way of our sphere, but not totally covering it so almost to the halfway point and we're gonna add another fluid physics simulation to this and when this time we're gonna choose the obstacle like I said this way now our fluid will hit the obstacle it'll interact with it and then it'll go move around it and fall down into our domain box again every this the stock settings are fine you can play with them if you want to see what happens and that's the best way to learn but the stock settings are pretty good in recent versions so now all we need to do to create the simulation is choose our boundary box which is cube and then we're just gonna hit bake and what this will do is it will take the it'll take the sphere as the fluid it'll take the plane as the boundary and it'll take our boundary box and it'll calculate everything inside of it this will take quite a while because it has to calculate for every single frame and it can take a lot of memory. In this instance, since it's a very simple simulation, it's only taking up 27 megabytes, but this can get up to the hundreds of megabytes. So Blender can crash if you run out of memory. So a good habit to get into is saving it with Control S. And just get in the habit of always pressing Control S and saving over constantly when you're doing things like this because Blender does like to crash once in a while. It's gotten better in recent versions, a lot better, but it does like to crash doing heavy, heavy simulations. So hit bake. It's going to start doing the simulation. As you can see, it's 
the box has gone away. It's still there, but now it's going to do the simulation. As you can see on the first frame here, it's now turned into some sort of a weird looking object. That's because it's now turned into basically a giant water droplet. And you can see up here we have the fluid simulation progress, and this is going to take a while. So go grab some food, grab something to drink, and I'll be back when it's finished. One thing I forgot is under our plane where we've set up the obstacle, uh, it actually isn't a volume. We want to use shell so that it just interacts with the outside. And we want to give it a little bit of depth. So let's go to edit and let's take this face and extrude it along the Z just a little bit. This will give it something more to interact with. And then we'll go back to our cube, which is our boundary box, and let's rebake this. One thing to note, as it's doing the simulation, you can see your progress by opening up your timeline window. I've just simply split my window and opened up my timeline. And then just scroll through the frames one by one and you can see the progress as it goes. As you can see, it drops down, it hits our box and kind of flows over and around it. And as you can see, it hits the edges of our boundary box here and doesn't go through through it so that's where it's going to stop but you can go through and see your progress as it's being simulated however once you get to an unrendered part let me skip forward a bunch so right here it hasn't figured out this frame yet so we don't see anything so we have to wait for it to render that frame one last thing to note is while it's baking it cannot do two things at once, so don't try to render anything while it's baking. Wait for it to finish the fluid simulation bake. Otherwise, it'll stop your fluid simulation and choose to render instead. You can do that if you've decided that it's simulated enough, but we want the entire thing to be simulated, so we're just going to wait and not do any renders during this time. Alright, it's finished baking now. It took well over 45 minutes that's because I use such a large domain cube so keep things small don't go ahead and simulate oceans or lakes for example that is gonna take forever but anyways now you can see kind of what happens so it hits that splashes and then kinda of settles out it doesn't do a lot extra here the main reason for that is because we used a low resolution so it doesn't act really realistic like I said use a higher value around 200 or so for that but this gives you a good preview now you can play around with your materials and give it more of a water look so we would take our sphere which is essentially what the fluid is we'd add in a new material we would use glass and uh, your index of refraction, go online and just search up index of refraction of water and enter in that value there. I think it's around 1.33 or so. And that will look like water. And if we go into material mode, you can kind of see what it happens. Now, if you don't want the cube that emits the water to show up in your render, you can either hide it from the render or just make sure it's out of the camera's view but it's still within the boundary box or you can move it to another render layer I believe anyways pick a frame that you like so I'm gonna stop and just manually scroll through with the arrows pick a frame that you like we'll say something like right there and give it a quick render so you can't see much because I don't have any lighting and no materials on anything else here, but you get the idea. It kind of looks like milk, actually. <laughs> so anyways, see what it looks like at a later point by going somewhere around here and just give it a quick render again. So obviously, you can play around with that. And that's basic, so stay tuned for the next part of this video where we're going to be using the inflow part of the fluid simulator to pour fluid and fill a glass or a bowl or any other objects. Uh, a quick thing to note, as I said, the bigger your domain box, the longer it's going to take to bake, the longer it's going to take for that to simulate everything, so use it as small as possible. And also, once it's finished baking the fluid simulation render, then you can render everything much, much faster. You, it doesn't have to calculate the fluid animation for every frame. It took over 45 minutes to render 
every all 300 frames or sorry to simulate all 300 frames of the fluid simulation but to render all 300 frames would just take a few minutes at the current state it's in so anyways that was just an intro to the fluid simulator have fun with it and again wait for part two thanks for watching from the team here at blendertech.com again that's blendertek.com if you enjoyed this video and learned something please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming tutorials. If you, we, we try to add from 3 to 10 a day. If you dislike this video for some reason, please leave a comment or email the team at info at blendertech.com as to what you did not like and what we can improve on. We also take requests for tutorials, so let us know what you'd like or want more content of. See you next time, and remember, create your way.